Hey, you guys, it's finally time. We are so thrilled to introduce you to our new consulting offer, the six-week Digital Nomad Money-Making Roadmap. This is a program that's going to give you guidance on transforming your career into online work and becoming a successful digital nomad. This six-week Digital Nomad Money-Making Roadmap is a one-on-one consulting offer that's going to help you avoid wrong turns, stay on track, and avoid feeling overwhelmed. We're going to help you find your passion, set clear goals, and make living as a digital nomad a successful and sustainable lifestyle. With our expert guidance, you can learn how to build a digital nomad career that allows you to work from anywhere in the world. We'll help you every step along the way too, from identifying your strengths to finding the best opportunities that match your skills and your interests. Don't wait any longer to start living the life of your dream. Sign up for our six-week digital nomad money-making roadmap today and get on the path to success. You can find more information and sign up at austinandmonica.com slash money-making roadmap. So let us help you transform your life and take it on the road. All right, let's dive into today's episode. All right, everybody, welcome to another Nomadic Journey Kickstarter episode. Uh, We are joined today by our new friend, David. We're going to start by letting David introduce himself. And uh, so, David, why don't you get us started and tell us a little bit about who you are and what brings you here today? So nice to meet you guys. My name is David. I'm originally from Kiev, Ukraine. Now I'm living in Tel Aviv, Israel. I'm here for a year and a half. I've been doing marketing for the last uh, eight years or even more. I've been working with a lot of different industries and a lot of huge international companies like Procter & Gamble, Fiverr, Hilton, and some some more. And uh, lately, I started to work as a freelancer. So I want to build my remote career in order to have opportunity to travel uh, to different countries and to explore the globe. So that's why I wanted to talk with you guys and to get your experience and advice on that. Yeah, I was looking through that email you sent and you've worked with some really big brands, like some of the brands that I have in my shower right now, which is so (laughs) exciting. I love that. That is really cool. It's awesome to hear that you have already so much experience with the job that you're looking to do as a freelancer now. So that's a real, I mean, that's a really good leg up, a really good start to have. Tell us a little bit about what you kind of what the idea you have in your head for what you want to do full time online to be making an income. So basically, my main area of expertise is product marketing, uh, which includes marketing strategy, market research, branding, uh, analysis of product and marketing funnel, a lot of different things. Uh, But also, I have a lot of good uh, people that I can uh, give some tasks to. uh, And my strategy is also to delegate a lot of things to my friends in Ukraine, because I know that there are a lot of good specialists. So I can build a really full scale process basically for any marketing, for any, for marketing in any company. And then a lot of things I can do myself, such as marketing strategy or product marketing or branding. And a lot of things like design or content, um, I can just bring really talented people to do these tasks as well. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's really, really great. Let's, let's say that we're coming back, David, in half a year. In six months, and we're sitting down together, having another conversation and talking about how great the last half year has gone for you. And you're telling us about the perfect six months that you've had. Paint the picture for us of of what you would be doing and what your online business or online freelancing job would look like for you at that point. So I think it's it's, uh, mostly not about the business itself, but about the traveling. Because, you know, I heard once that uh, people are not looking actually for a perfect job. They're looking for a perfect location. So I think the main, the main goal is, is to travel. I would love to visit Thailand. I think that's my next destination. I also would love to travel somewhere in the U.S. as well. Uh, New York, L.A., Miami, something like that. Maybe some European countries. So in the perfect world, I would say. And of course, in this perfect world, the war in Ukraine already ended, and uh, I had the yeah. opportunity to travel to Ukraine as well and to visit my yeah. family and friends. Mm-hmm. I think in a perfect world, the war would have never started. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I just want to say that my heart really goes out to you and your your friends and family who are in Ukraine or even not in Ukraine. <laughs> That's so, so, I can't even imagine how horrible that is. Yes, thanks for that. But I think in half year, in the perfect world, we'll see. Uh, all of the Ukrainian territory is coming back to Ukraine and uh, will enjoy uh, some Crimean summer. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, we're, we're going to keep hoping and praying for that to happen. <laughs> okay. So talk, talk to me about 
What is the one thing that you feel like is holding you back from getting to that that dream to be able to travel um, and to be more mobile and more of a digital nomad? First thing I'm thinking is like fear. And also I think it's connected to the fact that for last maybe five years, I've been working in corporate world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, a bit uh, stressing now to move uh, to different uh, kind of, uh, to different kind of environments. So my career started when I was doing my own business. So I was originally independent. And then um, I was working in a lot of companies, uh, the big ones, the famous ones, which is which gave me a lot of great experience and a lot of great connections. But I think that's a completely different mindset when you work as an employee in a company in the corporate world or when you do your own freelance business. So because I just started the last few months, there is a lot of things that I need to do. And it just requires a lot of time and energy to adjust, to adopt to different uh, type of work. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Do you still have your corporate job right now? No, I'm working only as a freelancer now. Only as a freelancer. Wow, good for you. That's brave. We uh we took a similar leap in our journey. So I think when we have talked to a lot of people on their digital nomad journey, there's a several phases, like kind of check mark phases that people go through as they're they're getting ready to, you know, at first it's kind of like this daydreaming phase that they're like in their corporate jobs and it's really secure and it's really nice. And then they're like, but I I want to explore. I want to be the author of my life. I don't want to be stuck reporting to somebody all the time. Like I want to kind of take more ownership of my life. And then they kind of move to phase two, which is like taking the leap. Like, yeah, okay, I'm going to do it. And sometimes they hung, hold on to their corporate job. Um, obviously, you let it go and you're freelancing now, which is super exciting. But this is also a scary phase because you're not entirely sure that it's going to work. And a lot of times this is kind of where a lot of that kind of imposter syndrome comes up and a lot of that nervousness and a lot of people get stuck in this phase and and have a hard time moving at and I moving on from this phase and I kind of feel like that's where you're at in your business tell me about where you're at with your your freelance journey do you feel like you have several clients do you have are you booked out are you struggling to get clients talk to me more about what your your freelance business is like right now yes so actually I have already a few clients which is amazing and they like working with them Uh, one of them is a company called Stoke Talent it was acquired by Fiverr it is uh, basically Israeli both Israeli startups for freelancers. So uh, I'm actually doing now the rebranding project for this talk talent company because they're becoming Fiverr Enterprise. So I'm changing all their website uh, and uh, all their product. And it's very interesting project really related to what I'm interested in in yeah. terms of freelancing. And also I'm working with a Chinese tea store and a studio in Tel Aviv called Hoyum Tea, also a very authentic and interesting place. Uh, and there's a few more businesses that I'm working with now. I'm uh, now actively looking for more clients. I had a, mm-hmm. really a lot of talks and I continue to have a lot of meetings and talks uh, with different people. I contacted maybe more than 50 leads already, like uh, actively having some talks, proposing them some plans. A lot of them are in progress. So yeah, I'm now actively looking for more clients to boost my business. That's really incredible that you already had such a great start. When you So you told us that one of the big things that you, in your opinion, is uh, holding you back is your own fear. What would you say it is that you're afraid of? Is it more of, um, well, I'll just, I'll just leave it open. And what are you most afraid of? I think it's a fear of a failure actually, because, uh, as I said, I started my career with my own business in Ukraine. It was a business with uh, hookahs with different restaurants and cafes. I was outsourcing hookahs because it was very popular in the Ukraine at that time. And uh, it was a rather successful business for a few years. Uh, and I was working with four different places. And then at some point, I wanted to open also uh, my own place. So I did it. And then I think at some point, um, the business collapsed because of the of the scale. I didn't have enough experience to manage a lot of places at the same time. Mm-hmm. So at some point, it became too big, <laughs> too big to fail. Yeah. And I think when you have such experience, sometimes it's uh, really holding you back in future because you really remember the worst thing like the best. <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. So now when I'm starting my business again, of course, I think that fear of failure uh, is sure. somewhere in my conscious. But still, I'm, keep, I'm keeping going. So, yeah. you know, uh, uh, every failure is a lesson. So I would I would recommend for you, David, whenever you, you have these moments where you feel a little bit afraid of not succeeding, 
go back and listen to this very conversation we're having right now. Just go back and listen to this recording because you've already outlined everything to tell yourself to overcome that worry that you have. You've told us about starting up this freelance business that's already successful because you already have clients that you're working with. You've told us about these big name brands that you've worked with in your corporate job and, and the help that you've been able to provide for them and the value you've brought them. You told us about this business that you just started. And even though like the end result left kind of a sour taste in your mouth, you were successful in it. You did a great job at it. And you learned a lesson at the end with scalability. And I'm sure there's some things that if you were to start up again, you would do differently, but now you know, right? So you have already, like you've told us in the past 10 minutes, all of the things that I would tell you of why you would be great at this job. And I think you just need to remind yourself of those things. And whenever you're in those those moments of feeling afraid, think back on all the positives. A lot of times our minds like hyper-focus on the negative and the kind of the sour things. I think you have plenty of positive experiences in in business and with helping clients to counteract those negative things. Yeah, I think one thing that you said that sticks out to me a lot was you said something along the lines of, um, shoot, it's gone now, but it's something along the lines of, it's not really a failure, now I've learned. And so I want you to start working on rephrasing that in your mind instead of saying my biz- my first business failed, start saying this was attempt number one. Now I know what to do differently this time, okay? And then start to think about how you can reframe these failures. There really is is no failure in life, in my opinion. In my opinion, the only failure is to be scared and not to, to try again. Because there is no, there are no rules to life. You know, you can start 5,000 businesses and have a bunch of them not turn out, but a couple of them do and be wildly successful. And no one's going to remember the businesses that didn't turn out. So you have the ability to to take what you've learned and to create something new and to keep trying. The biggest thing that you need to overcome right now is it's yourself. You're the only one who's standing in your way. You've already had success. You already have clients who are wanting to work with you. You have a system set up in place. So you're reaching out to new leads. You have tons of really good experience backing you up. You have everything lined up for you to be successful. You just need to get on board now. So now you just mentally need to wrap your head around the fact that you are going to be wildly successful. And in six months, you're going to be traveling the world and you're going to look back at this conversation and be like, wow, I wish I had dreamed bigger because there's so my potential is so much bigger than I could see right now. Thank you for that. I think this all makes sense. And really, I think it's it's really important that I'm backed up by a lot of experience because mm-hmm. at that at that point of time, I was really like a student at university who did its first business. And of course, I made a lot of mistakes um, just because I didn't know a lot of things. Now I worked with a lot of really huge companies and brands uh, in the high tech field and in FMCG, Horika, and I learned a lot. So now I can approach it both for my business and for yeah. all businesses that I'm consulting now. And I th- I think that that information and that experience, even the experience of your first business um, collapsing, is going to be really valuable to your future clients. They're really going to appreciate the fact that you have seen businesses that have grown really fast. You've seen businesses that haven't been able to sustain that. You've seen a lot of different things, and you're going to be able to be more relatable and to be able to give them that insight that they wouldn't be able to get themselves. Yeah. And don't ignore the fact that you uh, had this business that ended up collapsing because that taught you some really valuable things. And so you don't want to ignore it, but you want to not focus on it so that it doesn't hold you back, but remember the lessons that you learned from it. Do you know how I know that you're going to be incredibly successful at this endeavor that you're working towards? It's because you're afraid of failing. You're afraid Mm -hmm. of not succeeding. And the fact that you are afraid of that means that you care about making it succeed. If you didn't care about it not working out, you wouldn't be afraid of it not working out. So you care about it, which means you're going to put forth the effort to make sure that it's successful. And if things get derailed along the road, I have no doubt that you're going to learn lessons from that, that you can then apply when you get back on that horse and, and keep working towards it. Look at that fear that you're feeling as a sign that you are really passionate and care a lot about what you're doing, and then use that to fuel you to, to move forward. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Just want to add that I'm also caring not only about my own success, but about the mutual success with all of my partners and clients that I'm working with. 
Uh, as you said, I really worked with a lot of different industries and a lot of companies of different types. I worked with my own business, with companies of 10 people, 50 people, 500 people, and thousands of people. So I understand how businesses work on different stages and uh, in different countries as well, because I work both in Ukraine and in Israel and for international markets as well. Uh, so I, I will be more than happy to share this with potential clients. Yeah, you have such a big heart, David, and it's really going to take you far. So we like to give you kind of more of a concrete step to take at the end of each of these episodes. And I think for me, the homework that I would leave for you is any time that you feel afraid or you are nervous that you're not going to be able to do it, or even just like maybe just make this a daily habit. I want you to sit down and write down the sentence, I will be successful because. And there are so many reasons why you're going to be successful. You have a huge heart. You have tons of experience. You have clients already wanting to work with you. You have so many... So you have so much potential. I'm just so excited. I don't even know what to say. My mouth is just going so fast. But I I want you to make sure that you're writing that down. Anytime that you kind of get uh, in your own way, write down, I will be successful because, and really don't hold back, okay? And I want you to keep writing these down every time it comes up. And as you do that, your mind is going to click into place and it's going to say, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to be successful. And so these are the next things that I need to do to get there. Sounds great. I love to write and draw a lot of things. I have a lot of different pages of uh, of affirmations and visualizations here. So I think it can work out really good for me. Perfect. Perfect. I'm so excited for you. So, so if you commit to doing that, we'll follow up with you uh, later down the road. And um, I mean, we definitely want to continue seeing where you go and see what happens with your freelancing business or your career. So if you commit to that, we will commit to following up and and seeing how you are, seeing how you're doing later down the road. Yes, it sounds amazing. Yeah. How does how does all this feel for you now? I know we've kind of been talking at you a lot. How are you feeling right now? Feeling good. I feel more inspired and uh, it was a very interesting conversation. I would love to keep in touch with you. Yes, definitely. Okay, cool. Before we end, if there's anybody who wants to follow you, follow your journey, or maybe they have some products that they need marketed, marketed, how can they find you? So I think the best thing is to reach via LinkedIn. Um, I can send you a link so that yeah. you can add it to mm-hmm. your comments Please do. this podcast. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, guys. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning into our podcast. We really hope that you found today's episode informative, valuable, and that you were able to find some actionable insights to apply to your life. If you're interested in taking your career on the road and becoming a digital nomad, then we invite you to explore our newest consulting offer, the six-week digital nomad money-making roadmap. This program is designed to guide you through the process of transforming your career into online work and living a successful, sustainable, and location-independent lifestyle. With our years of digital nomad experience, we will help you identify your passions, set clear goals, and find the best opportunities that match your skills and interests all without getting overwhelmed. So don't let the fear of taking a wrong turn or feeling lost hold you back any longer from living the life that you've always wanted. Sign up today for your six-week digital nomad money-making roadmap at austinandmonica.com slash moneymakingroadmap and let us help you turn your aspirations into a reality. Thanks again for joining us on this journey and remember to stay curious, stay adventurous, and stay connected.